Hello, this is Dr. Patrick Henley at Henley Innovations. Today, I'd like to show you how to um, input, uh, design and solve actually, a uh, rear wing spoiler using the built-in um, geometry creation tool in Stallion 3D. And you see, here's a built-in geometry tool. We start with a, um, <coughs> a wing shape, and you can see it in 3D here. And what I would like to do is to change the shape into a spoiler shape. So go back to the editor, and I can double click on the shape, and I can see I can put the dimensions there. I can make it the span about 60 inches, and then I can make the left cord. 10 inches and the right core 10 inches and uh, then I can change the airfoil shape I have I can change the start uh, click left airfoil select and I can use an airfoil from the UIUC airfoil double um, database I'm going to use a a C-Lig airfoil um, I can use a C-Lig um, 1, 2, 2, 3 shape and that's a popular shape for spoilers and uh, click OK but and what I can do also is to uh, make the camber negative so it's, it, it would be creating da downforce then I go to the right airfoil shape and then I select the same airfoil and here I make negative camber as well. Click OK. And here we now see. If we go back here, we um we can click update, and we can see the spoiler shape. So that's all it takes in Stallion 3D to create the spoiler shape and once we have the shape now I can analyze it I can set the flow conditions and the angle of attack for that spoiler um, let's make it about 10 degrees um, take fluid type order and do incompressible air at sea level and then go to set up the CFD um, set up the CFD solver uh, I'm going to use about 720,000 cells. Um, use the Reynolds Average Navier Stokes um, solution, and uh, everything else is all set. Um, take off the restart file, and then all I have to do now is click on CFD Solver, generate the grid, and solve the flow. So now um, the flow solver is running. You can see it here. And we see um, the we were able to create 300,000 um, cells for this iteration. At um, 335, 36 iterations, we, are, we can see the mass residual and the momentum residual. Um, but um, while, while the flow solver is going, we can still look at the solution and we can go and save you 3D solution and it allows you to look at intermediate solutions even though the flow is not fully converged as yet and you can update it uh, as, as it goes along and you can just follow your solution make sure it's going in the right direction. Speaking of directions, I Notice that I did a 10 degree angle of attack. I change it back to zero degrees. Secondly, um, what I, the reference area is one um, square meter, but I wanted it to match more the dimensions of the wing. If you recall, in the wing we had the dimensions were 60 by 10. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the wing um in the in the the reference area i want to change it to reflect that so it's 60 by 10 so it's 600 um 
square inches. So that is done. And then now that we look at the intermediate coefficient, that would make sense. Now we see as the flow converges, uh, we have a lift coefficient of negative 3.27 and a drag of coefficient of 0 0.076. That's going to change because it's not fully convergence yet. We can look at some graphs, the pressure coefficient at the locations along the span. And we see that that also is changing. We can check back with it a little bit later. So it's about an hour and 20 minutes later after the last um, look at the program so come back to the laptop and take a look and we see the pressure has advanced quite a bit we are now at the uh, integration 3100 and uh, let's take a look at the aerodynamic data look at the aerodynamic coefficients you see um, for this problem we have a downforce coefficient of 800, sorry, 0 0.8, negative 0 0.891, and a lift to downforce or lift to drag ratio um, of um, negative 16.44. The aspect ratio of this wing is around 5, so that, that's very reasonable. The drag coefficient is 0. 0542, which is um, well within um, uh, the 5% accuracy range for a turbulent wing. Remember, we are solving the Reynolds average Navier-Stokes. So we could look at the bottom side of the wing. In this case, the bottom side is so-called pressure side, uh, the suction side, and the top side is the pressure side. And we could look at the the pressure. <clears throat> legend and you see at uh, we're running this at 100 meters per second that's over 200 miles an hour so it's a very fast car and we would like to see exactly what would be the forces on this wing at those speeds so we go to the aerodynamic forces we see that the lift force would be negative 476 at zero angle of attack and the pressure drag, the drag force would be around um, 29, 30 pounds, 29 pounds. We can take another look at the pressure coefficient on the wing surface at uh, the one meter station. I click the graph uh, pressure coefficient and we see that um, we have a converged pressure coefficient. We can look at different stations surface graph options, look at 0.5, for example, 0.5, and uh, take a look at what the pressure coefficient would look there at that station. See, it's almost the same. I uh, change a little bit, so a rectangular wing, and so it would, it would vary. Uh, at the tip, it would be much, much smaller. So um, we could also take a look at um, another variable. Let's to do that. We look at the visualization surface graph. Look at the velocity on the surface. Update, and we can see near the surface of this wing, we have a flow velocity. On the low side, it's the suction side. Flow velocity is higher, and on the top side, which is the pressure side for this case we have a lower flow velocity. So that's taking a quick look. Well, another thing I'd like to do is, is before we leave is to see what would happen. We're running this thing at um, one meter, or 100 meters per second, and we look at the forces. Uh, we have like a downforce of about 476 pounds. Let's say if we were going at a more reasonable speed, say like, 70 miles an hour what would be the downforce and we could look at that aerodynamics forces and if we are going at 70 miles an hour our downforce would be 
46 pounds, which would be okay, um, I guess, on a regular car. Now, we can do another study with a car attached, and this might change due to interaction with the car. So this is Dr. Patrick Hanley at Hanley Innovations. Uh, more information can be found at HanleyInnovations.com. Thanks for watching.